Okay, I can highlight and make it bold. Same here. Now the next interesting thing is I'm how I'm going to include a graph. I just simply go to the insert tab. This gives me these options. I'm going to grab the chart icon and drag it over here and drop it. Same thing here on the percent. I highlighted uh, the box. I click on insert and drag and drop the chart. All right. Now, I click and go back to the quarterly sales revenue. And here, I'm going to uh, set this as a bar. And this is a vertical bar. That's the one that I'm going to select, vertical bar. And um, the chart style will be Earth. And now, I just simply drag and drop the, uh, the values, like, for example, the revenue and quarter. Revenue and quarter. So what we are seeing here is um, how you can generate your report online. And here I'm going to select the pie. Pie. All right, and next uh, the style will be Earth, and um, I need just some values over here. This will be revenue and quarter as well. Revenue and quarter. All right. Now, let me show you something interesting here because this is getting even more interesting. Every object, like graph, on the left-hand side, you see the properties because it doesn't it, it doesn't end just there. You have more things to handle for a graph, and there are even more like appearance. And, the, and one of them is the chart legend. I would like to have the legend right below the graph. So you go and to the location properties, and you say bottom, and it's just below the graph. Same thing for the pie. I select the pie, and I select the uh, chart layer, and I say I want the location to the bottom. All right. Now, with that, uh, I can immediately run my report. I can save. OK, and I can return and view my report. So focus on the first two uh, graphs. It, <clears throat> they, they were created just uh, live with you. So this is a report on VA Publisher now. Uh, it's interactive. That means that uh, when I click on one of the objects, it immediately selects or filters the information for that particular item on the rest of the page like for, for now for example I click on this one this is 2008 Q3 revenue and it filters all the re rest of the information on the page for that value 2008 Q3 if I want to remove it just click here so similarly to what we just did with these uh, two objects we created you can do it with the other chart types now you see a table Let's see how it, you, you create a table insert, inserted here. I just already, I already have one, but I want you to see how you create one. It's very simple. So let's go back to edit layout and the ed edit mode. I'm going back here. You already know that to have these little boxes, you have to use the grid layout, all right? Now, how do you insert a table? It, that is simple. So you, what you do is you grab this icon, the data table, click here, and then uh, you immediately have the option of um, drag and drop the year, brand, quantity sold, Okay, 
So if you want to remove something like like I just did, um, this is not the correct. So if you want to remove something, you just highlight it and just remove it like delete. And uh, you just delete it. And select and delete. So you actually have to drag and drop the items from up here because I'm going to show the report for uh, annual sales by quarter. You see year, quarter, and then revenue. All right. Now you can see that maybe the numbers go beyond the, 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 the section that they are supposed to be. It's just a matter of resizing it. As you can see, I can resize that very easily. All right. Now, in addition to that, you can format the numbers because once you highlight the numbers, you can immediately see this is uh, dynamically adjusted and you can see the data formatting option and you see a number. And the numbers get uh, formatted. And the total, for example, here, you select the, that cell and you give the format. You can center this one, you can uh, center this one too, and you can select the, the rest of the values. It, now, it just follows the same uh, criteria when you are creating a report, doing some formatting. One additional thing of this is that uh, you can um, group this by. Instead of having everything 2008, you can group left, and you have 2008. And once you have grouped, you immediately see that the grouping can have a subtotal. You check subtotals, and then you get the subtotals, and you have a grand total. What you can do now is nicely, you can double click and say um, total for the years, so that is year total, and you can have a grand total. And now uh, let's make it bold, and this one to bold and italic. All right. So you have idea an idea now how the easily get a report in on template builder is. You just save it, and you run the report. Return, and it's running. Okay. Now. This is the online view. You can uh, generate the output as I explained before in the different output formats. You can go to PDF and generate that output. All right. I want you to notice one thing is that we have two graphs on a page, two graphs on a page, and the two tables on a page. Why is that? Is because um, I want to show you that there is an object, an interesting object, which is called the page break. When we go back and edit the layout, you notice that just below the graphs, there is this line here. That is nothing more than just a page break, and that is part of the insert uh, of the objects available for the insert tab. So you hear, you see here, page break. And the page break is uh, um, very used when you run reports for for different uh, for for something that is gets repeated every time, and you want to start a new page. You need a break page, a page break. So one typical example is uh, um, letters. You run the report for customers uh, on a marketing campaign. You want to start always. Um, the first page in a particular way. You, you need a page break, and the page break will be right um, after of before finishing the repeating section, which is something that I will show in a moment. But you need to insert. How do you do it? Um, just very simple. Uh, what you do is you go get the page break, and you just insert the page break wherever you want. So I'm in, actually inserting another page break. This will be two page breaks. But anyways, it's, it's just an example of how you do it. Now, um, you've, you've seen how I create a report and a template. You can um, edit the report and add an additional template to it. 
because we just saw one of them. To add an additional layout or a template, you just click Add New Layout, and then this comes back and, and presents you the basic templates that you have at your disposal, or you can start from a blank page based on the same data model that you, you, you associated with this report at the beginning. Now you again have the same data model and the page is blank. Okay, then you, you will have another way to create uh, or to lay out the, the data on a page. So it, that is the way that you generate two um, or three or more uh, templates based on the same report, on the same data model. Just to show you quickly the other template that I had associated with, with, with this um, data model is simple a table and another pie type and that's all. I mean I can add additional pie graph or you know a different thing here. Well that is basically uh, the report definition. What I'd like to cover now is about the, the, the new data modeler. Let's we'll go back to the slides. That is about the data template uh, and the template builder. And we'll see the new data model now in action. When does it really matter? It really matters when, for example, you have a report like an invoice. And you generate an invoice for many customers. And you need uh, information that is pertaining to your customer, pertaining to the order. And per order, you can have many line items. So. In previous releases, you could you could do this uh, um, by using a data template, which was something that you had to do manually. Now, in this new release, it's something automatic and more graphical, I would say. And then um, the the other improvement is that um, you can even do aggregations on the same uh, graphic. Um, as an alternative, in the release 10G, you could have done this using XPath and XSLT, but that required a lot of work and uh, some more coding. So this helps a lot, this new improvement uh, of uh, allowing the user or the developer to create this kind of reports graphically uh, reduces the amount of time of uh, creating a report. So this is what I was saying, in release 10G, you, a structure like this could only have been obtained by creating a data template and joining different queries, three different queries in a data template that had to be done manually. Now, in the release 11G, it's uh, essentially the same, but everything will be done graphically. You will create your query uh, graphically, uh, each of them separately, and the only condition is that they will have to have a common column so that they can be joined. Uh, in that way, you will generate a structure like a data template, but this time will be automatic. And, and a structure like this will help you to generate your report like the invoices or you know, um, orders report. And this will be the output like a table view. And the output will be, as I said before, 